Animation possibilities are endless. It can be overwhelming trying to choose what animation techniques to use and what to do for your projects. So to help with your animation work, here are five motion graphic techniques that you should know. Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel, Sunduck Film. Please be sure to drop a like on this video. It truly helps us out tremendously and let's get started. As always, you can download our project files for free if you wish to follow along. So our very first technique, we're gonna be talking about trim path animation. So what is being animated in from the trim path here is the circles animating here on the right and also this line trim paths is a very powerful animation technique for animating in lines. So to create a trim path animation at the very basic form is to grab the pen tool. We click on the word fill and make sure we set it to none. And we come here to stroke, make sure to set the solid color and click okay. You can use a stroke width around five, but it just varies depending on what you're doing. And we come here, click a point, hold down shift on your keyboard and click another point, And this will draw out a straight line like so. So then what you'll do is you go into your shape layer, go to add and you'll add a trim paths. You'll open this up. And by adjusting the start and end percent here, you're gonna be able to adjust the line. So for example, if we come here and set both the start and end to 50%, and we add a keyframe for both of these, and we move forward in our timeline, and then we adjust the end back to 0% and the start to 100%, we're now gonna have an animated line like this. And for every animation in this tutorial, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure everything's easy ease by hitting F9 on my keyboard while those keyframes are selected. And by clicking on the graph editor, a quick technique is we can click and drag all the keyframes here. And you'll see these handles and we just drag these into the center. We're gonna create a really cool snapping animation that looks just great. So if you wanna apply the trim pass effect to any shape, you just go ahead and grab the shape tool and you can draw any shape that you want here, change the stroke width as you see fit and you can just animate one end here. So I'll go set the end to 0% at a keyframe here and move forward in our timeline and set up to 100%. Um, and you know, now you'll be able to animate a shape like so. And of course we can take this and move it to anywhere in our composition. So I'll go right here and now we'll have something like this and that's pretty cool. So for the second tip in this video, I wanna talk about shading and coloring before we get into doing any other animation styles in here uh, because we want to make things stand out when we're doing this type of work. So for example, we come here and grab our background layer. We come here to effect generate and we'll add a gradient ramp to this. We can create a really unique look. So for example, I can grab that basic yellow that we were using and select it again. And I come here to one of these colors and just kind of make it slightly darker or just offset it in some way. And then I can reposition how I have our end of color and our start of color anchor points down here. And that'll give this a nice slight change of color. And then I obviously wanna be able to make our shape stand out if that's what you're looking to do. So I can come here again and apply that gradient ramp. I'll just reset it real quick. And then I can set our colors to some more contradictory colors that are just gonna stand out. So like a blue here might work great uh, while also setting the end color to more of a purpley type color. Now. When you're using the gradient ramp effect, you gotta keep in mind that this is all built around these two anchor points. So since the shape's over here, I have to move over one anchor point here and the other to the other side in order to kind of get that you know, purple in there. So that's how you use the gradient ramp effect very quickly. But if you do move the shape, you're gonna have to readjust these points. Another thing I can add to the circle to help it stand out from the background is go to effect uh, perspective and add a quick drop shadow. I'll change the direction to face towards the center of the composition. I'll go ahead and increase the softness up to about 70 and increase the opacity. And then I'm going to take the circle, I can duplicate it, hit S for my keyboard for scale and scale this one down. And this is going to create a stacking effect here. And that's going to look really cool. And then I can just offset one of these layers in the time. And we're going to have two animated circles like that. Creating motion graphics from scratch can be time consuming like any After Effects project. To help you save time and produce amazing work within minutes, we produce the Motion Graphics Advanced Pack, which contains over 750 templates for After Effects and Premiere Pro. You can preview every template before applying and then add it to your project with one click of a button. Then you can quickly change the graphics and the colors with the pre-made customization settings. And then you have a full graphic complete in under a minute instead of an hour. To see this pack in all 8,000 plus of our library of growing templates, be sure to check our links in the description below. So feel free to take these two previous techniques and use them as you see fit around your composition. So the next technique we're gonna talk about are pop animations. So how this works is you can grab any shape here from the top, but this time instead of using a stroke, which you still could use stroke shapes, we'll just set the fill color to solid color and we'll turn off the stroke. And for this case, I'll draw out a box here by holding shift on our keyboard, draw out a perfect square. And one thing I'm gonna do is make sure that the anchor point is centered on the shape. So to do that, what I'll do is control double click the pan behind tool here at the top. 
This will make sure that the anchor point is in the center of the shape, which will allow us to come here, hit Astron Keyboard for scale, and we'll add a keyframe for this, so we'll move it forward, and set the scale down to 0%. And this will animate it from the center of that anchor point. So also I can hit Shift R to bring up rotation. You know, I can add a keyframe for this, move it to that last uh, scale keyframe, and just change the rotation by a little bit. And what will happen is it'll rotate in. So go ahead and apply those keyframe animations we talked about. And now we'll have an animating square like this. And of course, be sure to apply your color and shading techniques as you see fit to this. And then you can easily take this layer and duplicate it around your composition. So now you can take these pop animation principles and you can duplicate it. And also remember to apply the color and shading techniques as well. Another animation technique we'll talk about here is positioning and looping techniques. So to do this, we'll say, just create a line. We'll just grab the rectangle tool and we can draw out a straight line like so, okay? And once again, we'll do the pan behind tool right there, control double click. And to properly do this, all we have to do is hit PR keyboard for position and I'll keyframe for this, move it forward and bring it off to outside the composition. So like this right here. And this time around, we'll go ahead and do easy ease, of course, and you can do the graphic editor as you will. We'll all click the stopwatch and we'll type out loop out with a capital O, open close parenthesis. This way, something will always be animating in and out here. Now it's all about layering as well, so put that underneath, and here we go. One thing we might want to do with the graph editor this time to keep the line up for longer is we'll come here, grab position, go to the graph editor, grab that last keyframe there, and we'll just drag out the handle all the way to max. This way, the line will be up for a little bit longer as it slows down by a touch. So, you know, that is pretty cool. We, of course, can drag out the keyframe as well. And that looks really cool. One thing you may notice throughout this tutorial is that I've been obviously duplicating some of these elements and adding in other shapes like these circles down here, which was part of the popping in animation. And also we duplicated the line here. So it's important to just take a lot of these concepts and create different variations with them. So it looks like you added more detail to your work in a very short amount of time. All right, so the very last animation concept I want to talk about here is very quickly adding looping animations to this. So it looks like the entire scene will be moving. So you see down here, we have some circles here that are constantly moving. So what I did here is I can grab one of our shapes. I'll hit P on keyboard for position. I'll click stopwatch and I'll type in wiggle. Open parenthesis 0.5 comma 20. I'll copy the expression so then I can paste it to other objects in the scene. And what this will allow us to do is just have a constant animation in our scene. Uh, so there's constant movement um, and everything looks pretty cool. With all these animation techniques implemented into our piece of work, you know, we're going to have a really cool detailed composition. As you see, things are moving around the comp with that last technique with the position wiggle. We have the popping animations, the trim paths, uh, and obviously the position loop animations that we did on technique number four. Now that we're at the end of the video, if you're looking to get a head start with your motion graphic work, you can download our free After Effects and Premiere Pro templates. Those links are below. You can get over like 100 templates uh, for your project. So hope you enjoyed this video and always be creative.